We kick off this series with this lovely Tiffany lamp. The guest mother purchased it after seeing the ad in a local newspaper. She bought it for $125. Made by Tiffany & Company, a company renowned for its luxury jewelry, silverware, crystal, and other high-end accessories, this lamp surely matches the Tiffany standard. It was made in around 1905. It comes in a rose helmet shade, so-called because it comes in the shape of a helmet. The base, which is of rare design, has a wonderful Art Nouveau quality to it. The design, called arc and leaf, comprises various styled leaf forms that go around the edge and extend to the top of the base. Under the shade is coated with gold leadings. This leading also matches the gold on the base. I have to say that the base is really unusual. I can count on one hand how many times I've seen this base. This rare, beautiful lamp is valued at... $80,000 and $125,000. Mom had a good eye. <laughs> Congratulations. In 2021, its value rose to a sum of $250,000 to $300,000. What a good piece of business, don't you think? $1,000. Where's my brother? <laughs> wow, that's unbelievable. I had no idea. Next, we look at these Tiffany vases and box crate. During the Depression, this guest grandmother went on a spree of buying Tiffany merchandise. Some coming by a crate load. And then a dress. The crate in itself, it's something you don't see very often with glass plastered all over the sides. The first vase is commonly called pastel glass. It's one of the later produced Tiffany products made in the 20s and in various colors. This other piece is a paperweight glass vase. It was first introduced in 1914. At the bottom of the vase, it is stated exhibition piece. From the date letter, which is a suffix L, that that would be somewhere around 1915. So it's possible that this could have gone to the 1915 San Francisco International Exhibition. There are many of these kinds of vases and museums around the world. Inside the crate, there's still a hidden treasure left to be unraveled. This lava vase is an extremely special Tiffany creation. Extremely special. It is meant to look like molten lava mm -hmm. on the surface of the vase. And this one is particularly interesting. These vases were usually difficult to make, as they usually get cracked in the making. On inspection, it's in exceptionally good condition. These pieces are valued at about... In a retail setting, this is something for Tiffany geeks everywhere, collectors, museums. They would actually be very excited about this, and it would be worth between five and $10,000. Oh, so. This piece would retail in uh, probably between two and $3,000. In a retail shop, it could be sold for anywhere between $50,000 and $75,000. An example like this, $100,000 and $150,000. Where's my brother? <laughs> wow, that's unbelievable. I had no idea. Which one of the items caught your eye? Let us know in the comments. You're kidding. No, I'm not. <laughs> All I can do is say thank you. Regarded as the stuff Tiffany's dreams are made of, this next piece reflects the elegance associated with the Tiffany name. This lamp belonged to the guest grandfather. It was one of the four lamps his grandfather purchased from the Tiffany Studios in 1915. This very lamp cost $90 and was used as his family dining room lamp. This lamp is the stuff that Tiffany dreams are made of. It has everything going for it. It's in fabulous condition. It's had two owners, your grandfather and then you. Yes. And it came directly from Tiffany Studios. The lamp comes in its original patina. It also retains its original hardware. Most hanging shades today are without their original hardware. It's called a turtle back glass lamp. These lamps were made in different colors, green, red, and yellow. This lovely lamp is valued at around $250,000. You're kidding. No, I'm not. <laughs> All I can do is say thank you. Are you 
shocked. I'm stunned. <laughs> Tiffany and Company, where elegance meets craftsmanship. This famous saying comes to light with this very piece. This natural pearl and diamond necklace is one exquisite Tiffany creation. Once owned by the guest husband's grandmother, this lovely necklace dates to around 1910. It's doubly signed with the Tiffany signature, one here and the other at the back of the clasp. One special property of the necklace is the natural pearls and not the diamonds. The pearls are of different sizes, combining to create a lovely piece. Almost 10 millimeters, which is big. And then it graduates from around six and a half down to three and a half. But each pearl is beautiful, the luster. These two pearls, which fell out of the necklace, are of significant value. Yes, these little pearls, they're probably $5,000. Do not lose these. The appraiser provides retail and insurance values of the necklace. $100,000. No way to insure and replace at $200,000. I'll have my daughters wear it in their wedding. Are you shocked? I'm stunned. <laughs> a precious gift to remember. These Tiffany lamps were gifted to the guest by a late dear friend. Made by Tiffany, these lamps are of a certain style. They are usually regarded as geometric lamps. But they have a little bit of decorations, making them a combination. The larger floor lamp has a geometric background, and the smaller lamp is decorated. Both lamps indicate to be early Tiffany pieces, as they date to around 1905. One indication is the large shade with very transparent glass. Another is that beneath the cap, it is signed and also bears a number with a hyphen. The sockets have been replaced, but these don't affect the value. Both of these lamps, a lot of times these get lost, but these are the originals, which is a very nice bonus to have. And even the, re the original caps have a lot of value today. Really? floor lamp has a senior floor base which is decorated. It's the second of the two kinds of decorated floor bases. Both lamps are valued at about $85,000 and on this one I would put an insurance value of $45,000. Okay. In 2022 they were collectively valued at $170,000. Flabbergasted. Unbelievable. Speechless. Wow. This next piece is of great sentimental value to the owner. The guest showed great persistence in acquiring this piece. He bought this piece from Lillian Nassau's antique store in New York after constantly persuading Lillian to sell it as it had a not-for-sale sticker attached to it. On the fourth try, he convinced her, and he got this piece for $15,000. This happened around January of 1980. This piece which is a mosaic with an iridized frog and two beautiful poppies, was made by Tiffany Studios around 1905. The mosaic piece is very rare, and a few single compositions exist. The frog depiction, with tiny pieces, looked like a similar work Tiffany did in Marshall Fields. There were a series of mosaics depicting the signs of the zodiacs, and each animal or sign was fashioned in much the same way as this frog. The poppies figure into lamps, as often seen in oriental poppy lamps. One fascinating feature of Tiffany mosaics, including this one, is that they are made of opalescent and translucent glass, instead of the opaque glass used in the 19th century mosaics. By using translucent and opalescent glass, you have much more of a sense of depth. Mm. And the coloration is very beautiful. It enabled you to use lots of different colors. These black outlines that have been used seem to be pieces of acid-washed glass, lacking reflective abilities. These outlines make the figures more pronounced. This mosaic is valued at about... 100000 and 150000 Flabbergasted. Unbelievable. Speechless. Whew. Wow. Next on the list is this limited edition Tiffany Aquamarine glass vase. This vase was bought in the early 30s by the guest parents at an estate sale in New Haven, Connecticut. 
This particular glass was made at Tiffany around 1914. The glass, which is called aquamarine glass, resembles seawater. When they first made this, they put a lot of aquatic life in it. Later on, they added flowers to it. Only a few of these glasses were made, as it was relatively expensive to produce. This was very costly to make because a lot of the pieces broke. Only Tiffany made aquamarine glasses because of the complexity of the production process. It's valued at about $100,000 to $110,000. <laughs> Pretty good. <laughs> this piece reflects the wealth and taste of the guest great-grandmother. This lovely necklace has been in the guest family for many years and was passed down from her great-grandmother. Another of Tiffany's masterpieces, this necklace dates to the early 1900s, between 1900 and 1908. Both the front and back of the pendant are beautifully designed and crafted. At the center is a black opal. Most people are more familiar with the common white opals, uh -huh. but this makes it a much more expensive piece. Black opal is considerably more rare. The green stones are Russian demitoid garnets, the rarest form of green garnets available. All these contribute significantly to the value of this necklace. This historic Lewis Comfort Tiffany jewelry is valued at about $30,000 to $40,000. Oh, I can't believe it. What do you think the value would be? Let me know in the comments. <laughs> That's <laughs> unbelievable and a surprise. Next is another stunning piece of Tiffany jewelry. This pendant watch necklace belonged to the guest mother-in-law. This necklace is from the Edwardian period. It was made by Tiffany and Company. The chain consists of about seven carats of diamonds. You have this beautiful, delicate chain right. of collet set, old European cut diamonds, okay. and then with these pretty marquee-shaped links. While the beautiful emerald cut stone weighs about two and a half carats. We then drop into this exquisitely made pendant. The filigree work and the diamond setting is beautifully done. Then you see this gorgeous engraving all along the border. The other side of the pendant reveals the watch. The appraiser values it at about... $40,000 to $60,000. <laughs> That's <laughs> unbelievable and a surprise. <laughs> oh my God. This beautiful necklace was gifted to the guest by her husband. He spent about $3,000 for the necklace. The necklace, which is signed by Tiffany and Company, dates to around 1915. The pendants are made of beautiful black opals. The larger one is slightly crazed. The smaller one is in good condition. Both opals are what are known as patchwork opals with lots of play of color, with lots of red, which is a very desirable color. Not only signed, but the craftsmanship is also indicative of a Lewis Comfort Tiffany piece. It's valued at about... Seventy and ninety thousand dollars. Oh my God. It's a treasure. Me. We now take a look at this beautiful Tiffany poppy lamp. The guest received this lamp, among other things, from her late stepsister's estate. The poppy design is very popular, coming in various shapes and sizes. This piece is a 20-inch cone. This very design was first introduced in the Tiffany 1906 catalog as a poppy cone. Actually, when you went to Tiffany Studios in 1906, uh, you could pick your own shade and your own base. This base, however, seems not to have been made in 1906, as it doesn't appear in the catalog. The base and cone were most likely made together. One, the gilded finish that you see. Um, also, the way the shade is signed, because the interior of the shade says Tiffany Studios, N period, Y period, and then the corresponding number that you would see in the catalog. Right. The signing format started in 1910, so the base and the shade were made together. All the parts of the lamp are original, except the sockets. This slightly devalues the piece, as collectors go for all originals. In this state, the lamp is valued at about... seventy dollars to $90,000 on this lamp. 
very nice. This guest brings in a fascinating piece of Chicago's history. This Tiffany Studio stained glass panel belonged to Marshall Fields Men's Grill Restaurant. In 1948, during the restaurant remodeling, a friend of the guest who was part of the remodeling team took some glass and gave it to her. This piece can be matched with the photos from the restaurant. This is a unique piece of Tiffany stained glass trying to adapt to the style of the great Chicago glassmakers okay. and architecture. It has more of a prairie style. The appraiser talks about appraising such items. Back around the turn of the century, Marshall Fields put in a men's grill restaurant. It's valued at about sixty to eighty thousand dollars. Thank you. Well thank you for coming. I, it's just it's just wonderful to see. Oh, thank and I really you very appreciate much. it. Mm. I can't wait to get it home. Next is this fascinating brooch, found in the extra button drawer of the dry cleaning store the guest parents had just purchased. Little did they know what a precious gem it would amount to. Made by Tiffany & Company, New York. It dates to around 1937. It's sort of a late deco style piece. It has two little rows of emeralds on either side of the baguette diamonds. Part of its interest, of course, is the fact that it has the original clasp, all the original fittings and everything. This unexpected gift is valued at about... $65,000. Oh, no. mm. I can't wait to get it home. This next piece is a Tiffany lamp which was purchased by the guest grandfather as an anniversary gift to his parents. He bought it in 1909 for around $50. This is a Tiffany leaded glass and patinated bronze table lamp. This is a poinsettia pattern with the red colored poinsettias evenly distributed. This is an 18 inch shade, which is a very good shade size. Mm -hmm. uh, good coloration, green and yellow and the red flowers throughout. On the shade, there's the Tiffany stamp and also two tensioning rings. The base also has the Tiffany stamp and is numbered. Poinsettia is a good collectible shade, and this is a uh, twisting kind of trunk form base, beautiful base, very desirable for collectors. This piece is valued at about fifty to seventy-five thousand dollars. Next is this beautiful Tiffany lamp. It belonged to the guest father-in-law, who bought it around 1928. This is a Tiffany Studios 12 light lily lamp. It was also famously called Pond Lily by Tiffany. The reason why he said pond lily, you can see the little lily pads down here that cluster around the stems, leading up to these beautiful glass shades, which are resembling flowers. It comes with its lovely patina, all original. The original finish is quite rare, as most get stripped over the years. It dates to between 1902 and 1915. The shades, which are the most valuable part of the lamp, are all intact. This beautiful lamp is valued at about fifty to sixty thousand dollars. This guest brings a rare Tiffany and Company GMT Master Rolex watch. It belonged to his uncle, who gifted him the watch as a going to college gift in 1975. This watch is an earlier version of the GMT Master Series. Checking the serial number, it's said to be made between 1963 and 1964. It has a few unique features. They're really very interesting. One of them is at the very bottom of the writing, there's a little line, it's underlined. Also, it's unusual to have the Tiffany name on the dial. This is a co-branded watch, having both the Tiffany and Rolex names on the dial. Tiffany no longer sells Rolex watches. They used to sell Rolex watches, but one day Rolex decided that they didn't want to print the Tiffany name on the dials anymore. So the fact that this watch has the Tiffany name on its dial adds to its collectability. In this state, this watch is valued at about... $50,000. Oh, good grief. That's, uh, that is absolutely stunning to me. I mean, it... This next piece is a Tiffany cold air return cover. The guest inherited it from a friend. This cover is said to be out of the house of Henry O. Havemeyer. Havemeyer, who was famously regarded as the Sugar King, was an American industrialist, 
entrepreneur and sugar refiner who founded and became president of the American Sugar Refining Company in 1891. In the 1890s, he contracted Tiffany Glass and Decorating Company to do the interior decoration of his home at 5th Avenue and 66th Street. This airy turn cover is said to be one of the pieces Tiffany used to beautify the house. The reason why it looks particularly beautiful today is that we have put plate behind it, which you wouldn't ordinarily see in the shaft where the piece was initially installed. The palette was in various colors, blue, green, silver, and gold. After the passing of Havemeyer and his wife, his house was slated to be demolished. An auction was done on the house's contents, of which this was one. This piece is like a Tiffany artifact and appeals greatly to collectors. It's valued at about... $45,000 and $50,000. Really? Yes. Really. Really. I don't think I'll be wearing it to any PTA meetings. <laughs> This guest brings this lovely jewelry, which belonged to her great-grandmother. Made by Tiffany & Company, this necklace dates to around the mid-1870s. It comes with these lovely graduated panels and this applied wirework design motif. In the mid-1870s, there's a style called archaeological revival. And in that period, twisted wirework and little beadwork was very, very popular. Tiffany picked up this design pattern and added it to her pieces. Another aspect of this necklace is that it represents the aesthetic period of Tiffany's designs. This period had a Japanese influence on the pieces. The decorative motifs of these panels, how they're extending out, as if they're almost screens or Japanese panels as well. The alternating panels here have also been patinated to help give the piece dimension. At the back, it is signed, and although not tested, it's most likely made of 18 karat gold. This lovely necklace is valued at about... Find this piece in a, a high-end store somewhere in the forty dollars to $50,000 range in today's market. I don't think I'll be wearing it to any PTA meetings. <laughs> Imagine delicate sapphires gleaming like midnight skies, surrounded by dazzling diamonds that twinkle like stars. The guest received this diamond and sapphire bracelet from her husband. The bracelet was designed by Tiffany & Company in 1960. Even after many years have passed, individuals continue to be captivated by the timeless elegance and beauty of the famous Tiffany & Company design. Diamond and sapphire bracelet, and it's set in platinum. That's what the white metal is. The diamonds are really, really beautiful. It's a mix of three different shapes. Oh, okay. They've got some rounds. Right. And then the pointy ones are called marquees, and then the rectangular ones are called baguettes. They combine with the sapphires to give a flower-like appearance. There are about 20 carats of diamonds in this bracelet. The sapphires are in this perfect blue color. The contrast between the deep blue sapphires and the sparkling diamonds creates a mesmerizing dance of colors and light. The appraiser values it at... $40,000 and $50,000 at auction. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's wonderful. This next piece is a Louis C. Tiffany Furnace's ink vase. The vase belonged to the guest great-grandmother and was given as a birthday gift to her. Made by L.C. Tiffany, Inc. in 1926, this vase is of an unusual kind. It is a piece of case glass, meaning several layers of glass had been added to make the piece. The interior is almost like a brownish cherry color, and then the exterior that's sort of peeking out underneath this matte finish decoration appears to almost be like um, an agate finish. It is art glass, and ironically, not made to be used as a vase. This lovely piece is valued at about... $30,000 and $50,000. Oh, my God. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow, I had no idea. So far, this has been my favorite piece. Which Tiffany item do you like best so far? Let me know in the comments. A great piece of buried treasure. This lamp was found abandoned in the dirt basement of the house where the guest grandmother worked in the 50s. This is a Tiffany Studios Lotus Bell table lamp. The lotus shade itself is supposed to resemble a lotus leaf opening up. 
And the Lotus design came in two different forms. Also, in a flat shape around 25 to 26 inches in diameter. It is stamped and numbered at the bottom of the base. The numbering indicates that it was made between 1902 and 1904. Additionally, on the shade, there's a teeny little tag that is stamped Tiffany Studios New York. That tag was usually applied to a shade between 1902 and 1904. The patina on the leading on the shade doesn't match the patina on the base. This is also not the original Tiffany switch. What you would normally find on this kind of base would be a matching little ribbed switch, which basically echoes what's going on in the fluted design on the base. Also, the sockets have been changed, and that affects the value. In its current state, it's valued at about... 35000 to 45000 It's exciting. I love buried treasure. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> is this lovely Tiffany & Company silver collection. This set belonged to the guest great aunt, and it came to her when she died. All four of these beautifully made Tiffany pieces were made between 1873 and 1891. They represent why the Tiffany name is, is so renowned. You can take away the decoration, just the handling of the metal, this hammering just makes beautiful facets. It's all sparkling like a diamond. These pieces represent the aesthetic movement, this movement was a style of decoration that looked towards Asia and the East. This item is most likely a custom-made piece. The reason I know that is it has an acid-etched monogram, but over the top of the monogram, they've placed these monkey figures. This was expensive when it was purchased. This piece with the frog is of fine quality and made with top-notch American silversmithing. This lovely silver collection is collectively valued at around thirty-five to $40,000. Oh my gosh. Kathy, thank you so much. I can't believe it. The next piece has great sentimental value to the guest family. Fondly called Brain Lamp, this lamp belonged to the guest grandmother and brings fond memories of the time spent in her house. This is a turtleneck tile iridescent glass. The glass is thinner than you would see in other items, a bigger form, a mm -hmm. little bit thin. It's usually not signed. I will s never say never, but it's usually not signed. Attached to it is this lovely bronze base. It is a patinated bronze and is down to the feet with the lily pad. It is signed with the Tiffany Studios mark at the bottom, and it dates to around 1910. This chain has been put on here later. This is a process that can be reversed to make it the way it was originally, which should get done to the piece. This slightly devalues it. In this state, it is valued at about $30,000 to $40,000. Oh my gosh. Wow. Wow. Oh my gosh. Picture your cigars stored in this elegant 1908 Tiffany & Company equestrian humidor, exuding sophistication and style. The guest mother bought this Belmont trophy for her husband. John C. Moore II was the director of Tiffany's factory where this trophy was made. This exquisite silver presentation piece is related to horse racing, adding a touch of elegance. It is a lovely Tiffany silver piece that would attract Tiffany collectors and those interested in equestrian items. Also, it includes a beautiful original presentation box that has the Tiffany & Company emblem inside. The piece is silver and weighs over 200 ounces. At auction, this beautiful piece is valued at about... thirty and $40,000 in today's current auction. Wow, that's amazing. Picture this, a stunning silver plaque engraved with your name and the special date. This beautiful collection by Tiffany was made for the guest great-great-grandparents' 50th wedding anniversary. The inner workings and the casing are crafted from solid gold, gleaming with opulence. Now, the outer casing is a gilt bronze, gold-plated bronze. On the back, there's a Tiffany & Company mark, along with the Union Square address. The plaque is in wonderful condition overall. The appraiser values it at... Between fifteen and $20,000. Really? <laughs> oh my goodness. The 
19th century, husbands would often give their wives a gift upon the birth of a child. This beautiful hardstone cameo perure was retailed by Tiffany & Company. This perure is a collection of different pieces of jewelry, such as a bracelet, earrings, and brooch. Cameos are carved either out of shell or out of stone. The harder the stone, the more valuable its beautifully articulated cameos become. The unique features of this cameo are its absolute thickness and dimensional quality. Based on the carvings and type of gold work, it is Italian jewelry from the 1860s to the 1870s. The other thing about this piece here is the cuff buttons. A set of this scale and magnitude, the particular gold value here is 14 carats. The appraiser values it at about $25,000 and $35,000. Okay. <laughs> Great. Do you still retain your stance on your favorite piece? Or have you found a new love? Let me know in the comments. We now look at this beautiful Ceylon Star Sapphire Ring. This ring and other items were part of the inheritance this guest received from her grandmother. Named after the wonderful Sri Lankan island Ceylon, where the stone was found, this blue stone is roughly about 25 carats. It dates to around 1922 platinum, all diamonds, and if you notice, in the back here, it's all set with diamonds underneath. The diamonds are most times not visible from the top. Affiliated with Tiffany, and also being a deco-style piece, these properties significantly increase its value. The appraiser values it at about twenty-five to $35,000. Oh, well, that's wonderful. My children would be happy to know that. Short. That's probably an excellent idea. Next on the list is this lovely glass vase. It has been in the guest mother's family for a very long time. Made by Tiffany, this vase is made of a special glass known as Cypriot glass. This is a type of glass characterized by the irregular pitted and texture surface seen on the vase. It was meant to replicate how the excavated Roman glass looked when it was discovered. This piece dates to the 1920s, as it is regarded as a later piece. The earlier pieces were mostly blue, purple, gold, and sometimes green on the surface. The other thing that's unusual about this is it has a clear bottom that's been applied, a clear foot. The other two pieces that I've seen didn't have this applied foot. The signature and the numbering on the foot dates this piece to between 1926 and 1929. It is a very rare and desirable piece. The appraiser values it at about thirty thousand dollars. I got better in short. That's probably an excellent idea. Next is this fine Tiffany Studios piece. The daffodil lampshade was found in the garage of the guest's late father's office. Being a signed Tiffany piece mostly never guarantees authenticity, as there are numerous counterfeits available. This, however, is an authentic Tiffany shade as there are several identifiers. It wasn't the signature that I was paying attention to. What I was looking at was the glass that was used, the way that it was constructed, the pattern, the finish, and that's on top of the leading. This all indicates that it's authentic. Also, when lightly tapped, there's a slight rattle. The shade probably rested on a base that had arms, as it seemed to be made for a fuel lamp. It dates to around 1905. The shade is valued at about $25,000 and $30,000. You're kidding. Not at all. I'm not oh kidding. <laughs> what do you think? Holy mackerel. Oh, yeah, I like it. So you really hit the spot today. You knew what to pick. I almost and... didn't bring it. Yellow diamonds are so unique and eye-catching, making them a perfect choice for a piece of jewelry. This is a rare collection of Tiffany & Company. This yellow diamond pendant dates between 1918 and 1920. The guest received this beautiful piece from her grandmother. This jewelry was designed by Louis Comfort because it has a wonderful wire work. This jewelry is an old European cut pear-shaped. This is a yellow diamond because it measures over one carat. The appraiser values this piece at... 20000 and up. What do you think? Holy mackerel! Oh, yeah, I like it. So, you really hit the spot today. You knew what to pick. I almost and... didn't bring it. Holy moly. 
I don't believe it. Oh my gosh. This necklace was gifted by the guest by a woman her family took in while ill. It is a peridot and diamond necklace. This necklace is made of 18 karat yellow gold. And then in the center, you have what we call a peridot. Peridots being green and very beautiful. They, they're not particularly expensive stones. The diamonds are set in free form around the edge. They are mixed in color, some in white, yellow, and a bit of champagne. At the back, there is the beautiful canateel type of wire work, all done by hand. Although marked Tiffany & Company, this piece strongly indicates that it was made by Lewis Comfort Tiffany. This lovely necklace is valued at... $20,000 to $30,000. Holy moly! I don't believe it. <laughs> oh my gosh! Next is another beautiful piece of Tiffany jewelry. This necklace belonged to the guest aunt. Made by Tiffany & Company, New York, this necklace is made of 18 karat gold. It is made in a style known as Etruscan Revival. Many of these Tiffany pieces were made by a French firm for them, Boucheron. This beautiful jewelry is valued at about... Over $25,000. Oh my goodness, oh. I'm just, I'm in shock right now. <laughs> this is a light fixture made by Tiffany Studios. This fixture is not just a piece of decor, it's a statement and work of art that transcends time. This fixture has small pieces of Tiffany glass enclosed in delicate metal frames, intertwined by connecting links. The original cap of this piece attached to the link is in good condition. Tiffany was captivated by Moorish designs, and many of his fixtures were inspired by this style. This type of patterning seen in the draped glass is known as chainmail. The appraiser values this piece at... $20,000 and $25,000. Oh Wow, oh, that's wonderful. This guest brings this lovely Tiffany inkwell, which belonged to his aunt. This is a rare mosaic inkwell, as only a limited number were made. The inset glass tile in various pieces usually differs. I've seen them with Cypriot glass tile. I've seen them with the tile that looks a little more like this. But one of the things that I've always noticed is that the color gradates. It's usually a little brighter at the top, and then it gets darker as it approaches the bottom. This piece has some certain condition issues. Two tiles on the lower end are missing. Also, the top of the inkwell is slightly depressed. It is signed at the bottom and also on the underside of this liner. In this state, it is valued at about twenty to twenty-five thousand dollars. Wow, so, it's a lot thanks. of ink. <laughs> so, it was a very generous gift. Oh my God, I, I owe him a big dinner in Paris. This beauty is not your average candle holder. It's a work of art. The guest friends bought this years ago at a garage sale. This piece is made from bronze and likely dates back to around 1905. Tiffany Studios are really at the forefront of the Art Nouveau movement. The leaves are extraordinary, each one a unique individual, stemming from the base. The stem displays grace and elegance, exuding class. The cast features intricate details and unique design, showcasing a rare saxifrage pattern. This rare collection is valued at twenty to $25,000. It's a very generous gift. Oh my God, I, I owe him a big dinner in Paris. <laughs> big dinner. In this special, with this Tiffany & Company mixed metal and mokume tray, a lover of Tiffany products, this guest bought this tray in the mid-70s at an antique show in Atlanta. She paid $95 for the tray. This piece is particularly interesting as it is made with mixed metal. It dates from the year 1878, and it's of a particular type of design called Japanesque. The Japanesque design occurred about the 1870s or so. It coincided with the opening up of trade to Japan. Tiffany imitated some of the Japanese designs, and this is one of them. It comes in a wonderful gourd shape, which is a highly unusual shape. The base of the tray is made of copper. One special feature of this gourd is this mixed metal called mokume. These pieces are very rare. It, however, has some condition issues. The background is not uniform in color. What would be appropriate for it is if it were all this sort of nice red color. Exactly. In this state, it's valued at about like 
20 to $25,000 at auction. Well, very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm pretty excited about that, my $90. Shocked. You should be. I it is shocked. absolutely superb. This engraved jewelry belongs to the guest great 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 grandmother. Another of Lewis Comfort Tiffany's masterpieces. This jewelry was made by the company around 1876. On the reverse side of the necklace is the Tiffany stamp and also the engraving. One unique feature of this necklace is that it has very strong Japanese influence in it a feat very rare with Tiffany pieces. It, however, was common in other jewelry houses, such as Cartier and Lalique, from around 1867 to 1917. This necklace is made in 18-karat gold and platinum. It's valued at about... Fifty-five and sixty thousand dollars. Shocked. You should be. I it is shocked. absolutely superb. Oh. we look at luscious jade beads strung together with a classy Tiffany clasp. It's like wearing a little piece of zen and sophistication around your neck. The appraiser is very excited about this collection. I, I was so excited because jade is one of my favorite things. In fact, I wear jade rings all the time. They are jadeite jade. These beads measure only 4 millimeters to 8.1 millimeters. Usually, when jade beads are larger, they're worth more. These jade beads are very translucent, so that's great. The best color of jade is usually emerald green. The appraiser values it at about... I'm going to say $25,000 to $35,000. Oh, my goodness, how wonderful. That is wonderful. Diamonds are truly a woman's best friend. This stunning piece has been used by four generations of women in the guest family. It's another one of Tiffany and Company's masterpieces. This pendant and Tiffany diamond necklace can be adorned as solely a necklace or changed into a brooch or a lorgnette. The pendant has two large old mine diamonds and platinum diamonds. The large old mine diamonds weigh about a carat each. The piece is all handmade, and being platinum, it was probably made around 1920. This beautiful piece is valued at... $30,000 to $40,000. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's a lot of money. Yes, it is. This next piece gives the guest the surprise of her life. She bought this lovely mirror at a yard sale in Hurley, New Mexico for $2. This is called a peacock mirror. It was made by Tiffany Studios in 1905. These rare mirrors were made in at least four different shapes and sizes. This is one of the smaller sizes, one of the less elaborate versions of it. There are beautiful chased bronze works depicting peacock feathers consistent all around the bottom, and they're inset with glass. You have two types of Tiffany glass in there. You have the leaded glass that you'd see in a window or in a lamp, but also you have this beautiful reflective glass that was used in mosaics. The peacock feather design continues along the edge of the mirror, and the back is completely chased. This peacock design is in the consummate Art Nouveau motif. It is in pretty good condition. You have the original beveled mirror inset in here, and it has lost some of the silvering behind it, but I would never recommend changing it. This lovely Tiffany mirror is valued at about... For $25,000. I had no idea he would What a great piece of business, don't you think? Now we're done. Let's see which one was your ultimate favorite piece. Which had you surprised about its worth? Which didn't you like?